Well, just hours after EU leaders announced their agreement, Libya's Coast Guard reported about 100 migrants missing at sea and feared dead after their boat capsized on its way to European shores, bringing home once again the urgency of the humanitarian situation. And for more on the bloc's political response, let's cross to our Brussels correspondent, Dave Keating. Dave, hello. Thank you for being with us. What will this deal mean for the hundreds of people who are risking their lives every day to reach Europe? Well, the idea behind these control centers is that they will have more funding and be better managed uh, than the centers that are welcoming these refugees now. Uh, because they will be EU-funded and EU-managed, uh, Italy and Greece have complained that they are overwhelmed trying to process these migrants who are arriving by sea. And so having, these, having this new funding and having this new management structure and solidarity, cooperation from the other EU member states would make a difference to refugees upon arriving on EU shores. But what about the refugees that don't make it that far? As you mentioned, this uh, potential disaster at sea reminds us that this solution does not, will probably not result in less deaths at sea because the focus right now is on these control centers now. The EU leaders also did agree to explore the idea of setting up centers, uh, so-called disembarkation platforms, outside the EU, so in North Africa, uh, meant to process people's asylum claims to the European Union before they enter the European Union. And the idea behind this is to stop people from making that risky and treacherous journey across the sea where their lives are at risk. So that's an idea that's going to be continued to be explored. It's the so-called Australian solution, but it's very controversial with human rights campaigners and several EU leaders say that this would be uh, against international national law and a, a, a morally unfit thing for the EU to do. And can this deal that will be implemented once again on a voluntary basis really make a difference in the way EU nations handle the crisis and share its fallout? Yeah, there's two things that were specified as voluntary in this agreement. One is setting up the control centers themselves. Italy wanted that inserted in because they're a little bit skeptical that they're actually going to get this money and help from the EU in managing these centers. And they don't want a situation in which they're suddenly obliged to set up these centers and end up with no help from their EU partners. So they were very clear in those being voluntary. Meanwhile, uh, resettlement schemes, spreading migrants who have had their asylum uh, 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 requests accepted, spreading out those migrants across Europe, uh, the Eastern European countries, particularly the Visegrad Four led by Hungary, uh, they're very opposed to this idea. And so that was also made voluntary. Uh, it's a question, probably the resettlement scheme doesn't work very well if it's, man if it's voluntary. In terms of the control centers, as long as the EU does uh, come up with its side of the bargain, if it does provide the money and the management, there's no reason to think that they can't work in a better way than what exists right now in Italy and Greece and to a lesser extent Spain. Dave Keating reporting there from Brussels. Thank you very much for that.